What we're going to be looking at here is a weighted average cost method to determine our inventory here and we've got we're going to be using that here with the periodic inventory method. So what we have to do is we have to determine the weighted average cost of our inventory here to determine what the ending inventory value will be here and also what the cost of goods sold for the period would be here. But before we get into that let's just look at what we're talking about when we have this periodic inventory method here. Now that's based on the amount of inventory computed at the end of the period here including any beginning inventory. So to just refresh our memory here on periodic inventory let's just say for example here we had beginning inventory well in this example I'm just putting it down here as zero here but if you had any beginning inventory you'd have to include it here and then you have purchases for the period here so you would add your beginning inventory plus any purchases you had for the period that gives you the amount of available goods you have here to sell for the period and then subtracting out any ending inventory from your available goods that gives you the cost the goods sold here for the period. Now that's uh, just a refresher here on using this periodic inventory method. So let's go up and look at our example here and how we calculated our weighted average cost of our inventory here. So for example we're going to have here a specific date where we made a, a specific quantity here that we purchased at a unit price here, a specific unit price. And we're going to have several purchases here and then after we've made these purchases we're going to have um, distribution from our inventory here through a sale. We're going to have a sale here of some of the inventory that we purchased and then we're going to have an, uh, another purchase here at the end for our example here. And there are going to be at a different unit price here. So let's go and let's uh, determine how we'd calculate our weighted average cost here. So for our example here, we had a purchase here. It either could be the beginning inventory or it could be a purchase, whatever, however we define it here. So in this case, we have $2,000 or 2,000 units that we either had in beginning inventory or we had it at a purchase here. And it, its value is $8 per unit. So to determine the total dollar value here, all we do is take the $2,000 or 2,000 uh, quantity here times the $8 per unit price. That gives us an inventory value of here of $16,000. Next, we have this next purchase that we have here of 6,000 units. So here we have the 6,000 6, units at $8.80 per unit. So uh, that gives us an inventory value here of $52,800 and then we finally have our purchase here of 2,000 units our two th yeah 2,000 units here at $9.50 per unit here and uh, that equals uh, at nine that equals $19,000 here. So we would total for our weighted average method here, we just total all the either the beginning inventory here and all the purchases for the period. So in this case, we had the 2,000 plus the 6,000 plus the 2,000 quantity here gives us total inventory that we had here for the period of 10,000. 10,000 units. Now, based on the uh, or the value of that inventory, based on the uh, unit price that we paid for each of those uh, units or the quantity here at the specific unit price, we come up with the total amount here of that inventory equal to $87,800. Now, to determine the weighted average cost, all we do is take the total purchases here or the total inventory that we held for the period here of $87,800, divide that by the quantity here of $10,000. That gives us a weighted average cost here of $8.78. So this weighted average cost of goods, that's a, was whatever's available here during the period. So we had 10,000 units here that were available during the period and their weighted average cost here is $8.78. Now to determine our ending inventory. Well, we've had, uh, we sold 4,000 here of the 10,000 that was available. So we take the total amount here that we had of 10,000 less our sales of 4,000 gives us an ending inventory here of $6,000. Now to determine our ending inventory value, all we do is take the 6,000 units here that we have at the end of the 
period here times that weighted average cost here that we calculated at $8.78. That gives us a ending inventory value here of $52,680. Now to, again to determine the cost of goods sold here. All we do is take the cost of goods available for sale. That was the $87,800 here. That came off our uh, chart up here, our calculation up here for a weighted average uh, inventory here. The total value was $87,800. And then we would be subtracting out our ending inventory. Well, we calculated our ending inventory to be $52,680. So the difference here, the $87,800 less our $52,680 here in our ending inventory gives us our cost of goods sold here for the period here of $35,000. $120. Okay, so just to review here, when we're using this weighted average cost method here, we just take the units that we either had, we're holding in inventory and then the units that we purchase for the period here, and we just total those amounts, and then we determine the value of those, uh, total value of those units that were sitting here in, in inventory, and that's based on the particular unit cost per the quantity here that's attached to this quantity. So if we purchased in this case 2000 at $8 a piece, you just multiply those out here and you get a total uh, inventory value here of $16,000 based on this $8 unit uh, price here per the 2000 quantity that's sitting here. And then you just do that, continue to do that for all the inventory or the purchases you have for the period here times their unit cost, and you come up with the total quantity here of uh, purchases or inventory that you had, and then the, the, based on our total, the total value here of that inventory um, based on that unit price here, it gives us, uh, we, there we can calculate our weighted average cost just by taking the total value here of our inventory, in this case it was $87,800 divided by the $10,000 worth of uh, units that we have gives us a weighted cost here of $8.78. And then just our ending inventory, that's based on the quantity here in our ending inventory times the weighted average cost here in this case was $8.78, gives us the $52,680 here. And then the cost of goods sold, that's simply the cost of goods available for sale. That was the total amount here of inventory value that we calculated here, less our ending inventory value that we calculated here. So we had the 87,800 less the 52,680 gives us our cost of goods sold here of $35,120. Now in this example here we didn't go and we didn't calculate any uh, revenues for the period here based on those sales. We're just just using this here as an example here to show how you calc the, calculate the ending inventory and our cost of goods sold weighted based on this weighted average cost.